Um, so I wanted to talk about, so I wanted to just mention that. I wanted you to read that. And then I just want to give you an update about the latest woke nuttiness, craziness. Here's a few just in the last few days, right? Just a few. And I'm reading this. This is an article in Commentary ma Magazine that summarizes some of these. The online, uh, Amazon. Amazon, you know Amazon. Amazon found it necessary to redesign its smartphone app logo. Redesign its smartphone app logo. The company's signature upward-oriented arrow in the shape of a smile over a box with a jagged cut piece of blue tape over the top. So I, I think you probably... I prob you probably know, you know, what that is, right? So um, you've probably seen it. So why do you think they had to redesign it? All right, I see the question. Is this the question? I assume this was the question that, that was $20. So I see the question now. I did copy it over but forgot to mark it as a $20 question. So I'll get to it in a minute. What do you think was about Amazon's logo that upset people? Well, it's, it's, it, it sounds like a number of people complained that it looked like Hitler. I'm not kidding. The Amazon logo, smartphone app logo, supposedly looked like Hitler, so they actually redesigned it. I don't get that one. I'm, I've been try, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try later to look for the logo and try to figure it out, but that's like nuts, right? Now, why couldn't Amazon just say, that's not nuts, people. You guys are stupid. Just go away. No, it, it redesigned it. All right. Hyatt, the hotel, which hosted the conservative political action conference over this last weekend where Trump gave a speech, and I showed you a bit of uh, Josh Hawley's speech the other day. Hyatt has had, has been condemned, um, condemned because the stage on which the speakers appeared looked suspiciously like a Norse rune. I think that's how you pronounce it. Favored by the Nazi regimes. I mean, people are seeing Nazis everywhere. And, and Hyatt, of course, designed the stage and put the stage together. I guess the, the, the Republican Party had something, or the uh, uh, conservative uh, uh, political action committee co conference had something to do with the design, but really? Who comes up with this stuff? All right, the Syracuse University's women's lacrosse team offered a public apology after a student posted to the team's Instagram account featuring a player making the okay gesture. I think this is okay. I think that's the gesture. The lacrosse team acknowledged that the gesture is now, quote, interpreted by some as white supremacy sign. Really? And those who interpreted it this way were justifiably offended and upset. Why is it justifiable? When it's clear that it was a symbol of okay. This is insane. And then I heard today that six of Dr. Seuss's books, six, will not be published anymore because they have racist images in them. Dr. Seuss? I mean, maybe I'd have to go back and look. Um, I don't remember any racist images in the books. I love the Dr. Seuss books. The amazing, some of them are amazing. Amazing. Um, oh, The Places You'll Go is one of the best books ever. Uh, if you've never read The Places You'll Go, uh, Dr. Seuss is The Places You Go. It's just, it's just got the right sense of life about it. 
it's got this section about waiting and how awful waiting is and how horrible waiting is. It's just brilliant. It's just brilliant. I don't know. I mean, maybe there is some racist Dr. Seuss stuff. Um, you could edit it out. You don't have to, I guess. Um, but I'm on the cancel list. I'm waiting to be canceled. I think it would be great publicity if I get canceled. Nobody's canceled me. I'm, I'm really not happy about it. Oh, the places you'll go. I love all oh, the places you'll go. One of my favorite books, certainly one of my favorite books to read to my kids, ever, ever. All right, so that's kind of uh, woke culture, the latest, right? And notice, notice the cowardice of the New York Times, which knew the, sto knew the details of what happened two years ago and decided after intense internal investigation, which you can read about in, this, in these essays, that it was not an offense that he should be fired for or penalized for. And yet, because of a, uh, of, of a news story at some other publication, whose name I won't mention, the newsroom, particularly minorities in the newsroom, were so offended, not caring about whether the accusations about this guy were true or not, that he got fired because he was told that he'd lost he'd lost the newsroom not that he did anything wrong not that he did anything bad not that he was a bad person or a racist or anything but that he, some people in the newsroom were offended and therefore he needed to pay the price their offense, their emotional upset at lies about him meant that he needed to be sacrificed on the altar of political correctness and woke culture. Just disgusting. Why doesn't Syracuse, why doesn't Amazon, why doesn't Hyatt Hotels stand up to these bastards? Because if you stand up to them, you're called a racist. Nobody questions. Nobody challenges. That's part of what is so evil. That's part of what is so evil about what's happening in the New York Times because the New York Times is modeling this. It's enough that people accuse you of being a racist and that some people emotionally suspect maybe there's some truth to it. That's enough. So everybody folds. Everybody gives in. Nobody will say a word. Yeah. So we need to stop this. This is ridiculous. And, and the way they're using the word racism, it means nothing anymore. If you can throw racist at anybody, it empties the concept of all meaning. So when I call somebody a racist, it doesn't really mean anything. Because if I'm using it in the same sense as these other people's are. So. It's. It truly is horrific. And what is truly missing here is balls. Courage, somebody having the courage to stand up to this. Now, I want to give you one more example of the insanity going on in the world right now. This one's about critical race theory. Uh, and here there's a lawsuit brought against these people. This is, uh, uh, this is in Nevada, in a school in Nevada, high school in Nevada. And the lawsuit that's being brought, again, from a story in Commentary Magazine, uh, uh, the lawsuit is brought by a widowed black mom in Nevada on behalf of a mixed race child. Son, I don't know why, son. And the reason is that she is found offensive 
the public school's recent overall overhaul of its curriculum to incorporate intersectionality, which I've talked about on a couple of shows in the past, and critical race theory into the materials. And that the materials were not descriptive or informative, but normative and prescriptive. And they required the students to unlearn and fight back against, quote, oppressive structures. That some sexual, uh, racial, sexual, gender, and religious identities once revealed officially singled out in the programming as inherently problematic and assigned pejorative moral attributes. Now notice, this is brought by a mixed race child. You think a mixed race child would be a good guy in the intersectionality world. But no, they're oppressors because they have, I guess, a little bit of white in them. The lawsuit describes how one teacher greeted the boys' class with, hello, my wonderful social justice warriors. This is in school. And then she asked each student to label and identify their gender, race, and religious identities as part of an independent reflection exercise, which was graded. Students were told to determine what part of your identity has privilege or oppression attached to it? So they're supposed to rank themselves in this intersectionality world. Privilege is defined, they define privilege as, inherent belief in the inferiority of oppressed groups. Now that's great, because if that's a definition of privilege, then I, I'm glad to tell you I'm not privileged, because I don't believe there's an inherent be be I have an inherent belief in the inferiority of oppressed groups, so... I'm not privileged. Of course, the oppressed groups is being anyone who is not white. And of course, it wasn't just race and sex which were markers of oppressed status. It, it, to quote, in addition to white racial identity, defenders singled out assigned inherited moral attributes to pu pupils who fell into male, that's a bad thing, heterosexual, that's bad, uh, in Christian religious categories, that's bad. They're intrinsically oppressive. Intrinsically oppressive. The petition condemns that, the petition in, in this, and I'm reading for this article in commentary, the petition contends that critical race theory curriculum puts students like Clark, a mixed race boy, being raised in a Christian household in, quote, a deliberately designed psychologically abusive dilemma, participate in the exercise in violation of his own conscience and be branded with a pejorative label or conscientiously refrain from participating and suffer isolation from his classmates and be maligned by the same labeling regardless. This oppressor shaming was compulsory. Part of class. Now, this stuff is everywhere. It's spreading. It's often linked to the 1619 Project, which is trying to label the United States as inherently not a democracy, but a slaveocracy, certainly not a republic, certainly not individual rights. And it is everywhere. And uh, the good news in this one, yeah, three cheers for this mother, absolutely, Mitch, is that somebody sued them. Somebody stood up to these bastards. And until we stand up to these bastards, until we stand up and say no, until we sue them, until we make them pay, until we shame them in public for this garbage that is presented as social sciences, this racist garbage, which is presented as anti-racist but is actually the institutionalization of racism. It will continue. Voices have to be raised. We must speak up. We must talk about it and fight it and challenge it and sue and tell them to go to hell and not change our logos. Fight, fight, fight. And if we don't, we'll only have ourselves to blame.
what we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.